this is Nikki. We have a special guest today. Her name is Adon, and she's here to share her experience with you guys. Please note that um, she has her own YouTube channel, so please feel free to check her out. She is Baham on YouTube, and she's basically on the road to a thousand subscribers. So, guys, subscribe and you know, do that. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll drop her link. We'll drop her link in our description box. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Right. All right. So with her, Adon, can you please introduce yourself for the DNA Medical Series? Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Adon Oberen. I'm a fourth-year medical student studying at the University of the West Indies. I started at the Mona Campus and just continued to transfer to the Bahamas Campus. Um, yeah, I have a YouTube channel, and yeah, that's pretty much it about me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I hear you say you're from the Bahamas. So, what, what was like the difference between Jamaica and Bahamas when it comes to school? Hmm. Well, after I graduated high school, I moved to the States first. So I got my first degree over there before coming to Jamaica. Oh. So that is was kind of like a comparison. So I went from America to Jamaica schooling. Um, and it was different. I mean, mostly different from getting your first degree. Um, when you're doing your first degree, it's like you know you choose your classes. The schedule is flexible. You don't see the same people all day or anything like that. You don't know anyone in your class or anything like that. So we went to Jamaica and we're sitting in class nine o'clock in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon with the same people all day, one classroom. Um, so I guess that was like the biggest academic change. And of course, the volume of information. <laughs> I'm sure you all know it's like drinking water from a fire hydrant. <laughs> it's just so much information. Like, you can drink it, it's, it's safe for you, it's good for you, you won't die, but it'll be like a lot of That was the major difference um, coming to the States. And I also feel like academically in the States, they're a lot more accommodating. So, like, if you, in a, in, you have a class, it, Lecture might go upload the audio to the class online. If you missed it, you, you can listen to it online. Everything is online, or they do just kind of like pamper you through your program. That's that was my experience as opposed to med school, where it's like if you don't do the work, you don't do the work kind of thing. So, I got them I think that was the biggest transition, you know. Well, in terms, what about in terms of different culture? How was um, that for you adapting to the Jamaican lifestyle? <laughs> um, hmm. Well, for me, I think my biggest initial adjustment was like moving on hall. Um, so, hall was like a shocker to me. I got there, and you know, they, they have like a hall culture situation. I wasn't prepared for that at all <laughs> and then i i shipped all of my things in my apartment in Tampa. i shipped them to jamaica and cleared them with the process and everything and then i got to the room and i'm like these things can't even fit in here you know i just wasn't prepared at all for what i was going into so that was like my biggest adjustment but i feel like if you have no choice but to adjust quickly in jamaica like Kingston for me was very like fast paced. Y'all might be really used to it, but it was so fast paced that it was like, okay, if you don't adjust now, like you're gonna get left behind. That's like kind of how Kingston was to me. So, I mean, I adjusted pretty quickly. I mean, by the second week or so, I'm in halfway tree, you know, I'm doing this and that, I'm out and about, going to both things. So, I think I adjusted quickly. <laughs> All in terms of services, so yeah, culturally it's fine. Not many differences between like Jamaica and Bahamas. Culturally, I'd say not like crazy differences. So. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. It was in Bahamas, Okay. Pretty cool. So, another question on that. What's your most and least favorite thing about Jamaica and why? Okay. <laughs> My most favorite thing about Jamaica, I actually thought about it this morning when I was like, talking to my friends, I've met really good people in Jamaica. My flatmates were always like solid people, like it's very fun to live with. I was never someone who thought I could like live with people and, and enjoy it, you know, but I love my flatmates. I still talk to them to this day and I moved around quite a bit and like each set of flatmates I had was like equally Good. Mm. So that's my most favorite part about Jamaica, and just like having that camaraderie, like I said, like adjusting within that difficult. And I think it's because you have people who are adjusting also right next door. So I, if I had a complaint, somebody was experiencing the same thing. So if we felt supported all the time, <laughs> so that I think was my most favorite thing about Jamaica and the food. Okay, so jerk chicken and festival and all that stuff I can't get anymore. Barbara <laughs> Fry and Rice of Kings. I have Barbara Fry every single Friday. So that's definitely my most favorite part. Um, I think my least favorite, uh, my least favorite thing might have been like the hassle of Kingston. It's busy. Um, that's pretty much it. Like the hassle and maybe the heat is like hot on hot. <laughs> it's hot. Um, and then it's busy. So I think I would say it was my least favorite thing oh. about Jamaica. But overall, it's fine, so I'd say. Nothing that will kill us. That's fine. That's fine. We are good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you won't <are not. laughs> die. So. We're jumping into your medical school life now. So we want to hear, was being a doctor your career goal all your life? Was this what you wanted or was it like one day just get up and say, oh, I think I like this or it was all along? For me, it was like all along. It was always that thing that, that stuck, you know? So even if like in between and here and there, I might be like, oh, daddy, you know, I think I might be interested in architecture. You know, that would be like a one minute thing. And then real estate is like one minute thing. Engineering is like a one minute thing. But med, like that desire to do medicine was like the longest lasting and was always the number one thing. Um, I think the very first time I thought like, oh, this might be something for me. So <laughs> when I was in seventh grade, like thereabouts, to watch like the TV network E a lot, y'all know E, where like keeping up with Kardashians comes on. Yes, entertainment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I used to watch that all the time. Not so much keeping up with the Kardashians, but they had a show there called Doctor Nine or Two and Oh. Yeah. I don't know if y'all know that. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Almost like botched now, but back then it's Doctor Nine or Two and Oh. So I used to watch that literally all day like all day so i think there were two of them two plastic surgeons and one thing i really loved about the show was that you know somebody would come in with an imperfection and so they thought that was really like debilitating to them and really vague and difficult for them to deal with on a daily basis and to the doctors like an easy fix and at the end of the episode they're like happy with the results and everything and even though you know some people might think like cosmesis and like cosmetic surgery or plastic surgery and stuff like isn't important there was just something about you know seeing people have this huge problem and then to the doctors like a small problem a small fix that was something that that was the part that stood out to me like Somebody could have a huge problem, a, even like a physical issue, a physical ailment, and you know, with a pen and pad, we can fix that. Like you know, or with the surgery, we can fix that for them and make their quality of life so much better. So I was was that stood out to me as something like, okay, I want to do that 
they don't want to be that person to enter here because someone like they have this issue that's huge and because I spent my time studying it or something like that is a small fix so for us so that was something that I just wanted to do so that was like seventh grade and it just stuck with me then then wow. I have my moments though I have my moments where I'm like this <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These plastics. All right. So, um, you always wanted to do it, of course, and then entering med school. Now, what were your expectations like? What did you expect med school to be, and did it match up to what you expected? I think by then, by the time I actually got into medical school and started medical school, I had no expectation because. Like I said, I did my first degree in the state, so I first applied to U.S. med school, and I applied to like I have a video about it. Like I applied to maybe like ten schools. I think I from like twenty primaries and then ten secondaries, and that was a whole process. And then I just got rejected like one by one by one by one. So after after all that, I was like, okay, well, <laughs> maybe I can go do real estate or go do something else. <laughs> So my mind was kind of like off of it for a while, and then one of my friends, he reached out to me, he went to high school with me, he was like, you know, I go to UE, maybe apply to UE. So I was like, okay, like it doesn't hurt to apply. So I sent in my application, I didn't really expect anything, I didn't even completely finish my application, I didn't put in my essay, like there were a lot of things like I left out because I just... I just kind of like did it, you know, and then I was like riding on the street one day going to the mall <laughs> and I got an email that I was accepted and I just I just laughed that was a little kid and I wasn't expecting that and then it took me like, it took me a couple of months before I decided to go. I decided like last minute that I was going to go so at the time I was working, I was working in the emergency room as a medical scribe and basically like all I did for 12 hours every day is like follow doctors around try to their notes so after a while I guess old and like, tiring so I left one day like I left on my days off and I went back to the Bahamas because I was so close I was right in Florida so I would drive my car down to Miami just jump on the boat and go home <laughs> So I did that one day and then like my I had another shift coming up and I messaged my boss and I was like, I'm not coming in today. And so she was like, Why? Where are you? And I'm like, I'm at the beach in the Bahamas. I ain't coming to work today. You gotta find somebody else to fill my shift because there's no way I can get back in the state by ten o'clock tonight. Like, I'm not coming. So after that basically I was like, okay. It's probably best I go to med school because working in the hospital, not as a doctor, was not for me. You know, like, just you're there all day. You don't really feel like you have much of a purpose on the team. You're just kind of in the background. You can't speak to patients at all. You have no patient contact. I mean, it just didn't make sense to be there in that role and then to stay there. So I just thought to myself, it's best I just go to med school and go from there. And that was it. I packed my things, I shipped my things, like I said, to Jamaica, and I showed up. And so I didn't have, didn't have anything in mind to expect. So what I got was just what I got. So <laughs> It was destiny. It was destiny. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Clearly. So it just happened like that. So I just kind of showed up. Yeah, I am. Look at you now, almost done. <laughs> Thank God. I can't wait. I can't wait. So now you're in clinical years. So what was like the transition from preclinical to clinical like? Listen, what year are you all in again? Second year? Third. You're going in third year now. Mm -hmm. You're in, so you just started third year, first mm -hmm. semester. Yeah. Yes. Well. <laughs> Y'all will see very soon that clinical years are so different. And um, I don't think it's different in a bad way, but it's just so different that it can be shocking to many of us. So for me, I was not that wake up, go to class.
gosh, I don't even remember what time is the first clock, eight o'clock? Mm-hmm. Like three twin? Yeah, I was hardly ever down. <laughs> I could not make it to eight o'clock. Could not make it to nine o'clock. I might be there by ten. <laughs> but I'm there and I'm kinda like I'm sleeping or you know, midway through the semester I'm not going anymore. Second year I didn't go to class at all. The entire second year. Um, <laughs> I had like a little sickness and that consumed my entire day. So I just couldn't go to class and I was going to study at night. So going into the third year where the bus is waiting for you at like 6.15 or something like that. And if you miss it, like you just got to face what you're going to do. Take a taxi all the way downtown to go to KPH. I mean, you can't do that. You have to be they have your round at a certain time. So you need to be on that bus with the rest of your firm, with the rest of your class. So that was tough for me. Like getting up that early, getting on the bus, everybody on the bus in a bad mood. <laughs> so we're going on the bus and you're like, morning, and everybody like, mm. <laughs> no, it just was bad vibes. Like bad vibes for a clinical year. So it was just an adjustment. You expect to be there all day. So it's not like pre clinic where it's like, oh, I don't feel like listening to, I don't feel like listening to Dr. Lee today. I got an interested in today. I don't, I don't feel like hearing what he got to say. You can't do that. Like, you stuck in the hospital all day until they tell you, like, you can go. So that was definitely an adjustment for me. Okay, um, so, um, you completed third year, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, I think third year. No, I went, I did two of the rotations in third year, second semester, and then I went on my leave of absence. So I did my family medicine and surgery rotation, mm -hmm. and I was like, I was done. Like midway through surgery, I was exhausted. Like I can't even really explain the level of exhaustion. I was meant to be done. I was supposed to be done, so I just decided to go on a week of absence. Mm. So yeah. right, that's another thing. When when we're like, we know that we cannot take on anymore. There's nothing wrong with leaving get yourself back together and coming back again. It's, yeah. it's never a straight so road. Important. Right. Yeah, that is so important. I mean, a lot of people, the majority of your class is going to finish on time, mm -hmm. you know, so most likely you all be in that number, preferably, you know, where you do it, you hang in there, you get out of the way, but for a lot of people, even some people I know who are so academically sound, like they had good grades, they did well through med school academically, but like em emotionally or mentally, they got tired of it and left and didn't come back. Some left and came back. So I think like a pro tip for med is to take a break when you first realize you need it and don't like keep putting it off because then you get to a point where you don't ever want to come back. You know, like I rather people take take like a weekend off, you know, where you don't study that weekend or maybe if you feel tired, allow yourself to feel tired, allow yourself to get some rest. You don't overexert yourself or you could get to a point like where I was at where I was like, Well I ain't doing this no more. I don't wanna be this tired all this time. Because I got to a point where I was like, I just don't wanna be this tired, I don't wanna be this miserable anymore and I think that happens if you if you allow yourself to get that tired and that was a good amount of sense as opposed to taking time off the need. So that was something I, I based my body basically forced me to do because I wasn't listening all the while if that makes sense. Right. So I don't you said you did pathology and micro B in four years so far. So what was it like for you? Um, but how can micro B, y'all see when y'all have to do it, is really dense. So basically it's like four classes in one. You have your chem part, your anatomical part, 
um, forensic, you have microbiology, and then you have um, hematology. So you mm -hmm. have all those courses in one, and it's almost that you expect to remember all of your pathology and hematology from the previous years, which you have, for, of course, forgotten because you've forgotten after the exam anyway. <laughs> So we're in the fourth year now, um, they're asking you about multiple myeloma, they're asking you about um, leukemia, and, um, and you're like, okay, now I have to go read all of this again. So while you're trying to like study that again, you have microbiology going on, that's like just fast, as you all would know. And you have pathology going on, which is vast. So it's just like a lot coming at you at one time and a lot that you're expected to know. And that rotation is 10 weeks. So I came in my third week because, like I said, I came back on my leave of absence early because I, I felt led to come back to med school. So I just, you know, went back as soon as I got the fever to go back. So I went back early. And then I did my medicine rotation. And once my medicine rotation ended, pathology and micro B had already started. So I had to get approval to go into pop and micro B late. So I went in a week three. So I went in late, not too late, but late enough to be confused <laughs> and to be way behind. Because even if you were there for day one, you were still behind. You all know how it is. You know, you always lie behind these courses until the end um, when you try to catch up. So I was, I was like double E behind. Um, but besides that, it was cool. I got to see a lot. I'm glad I did it when I did because now it's going to be much different. Like the class that's doing it now, my class now, they're not able to go, of course, into the autopsy room. They're not able to go into the lab and see things or anything like that. So I think they're missing a lot. So for me, I was happy that I, I went back when I did. So I was able to participate in autopsies and things like that. And you would never forget, you know, what you see in that autopsy room and so on and so forth. So how the Michael B was nice. It was an experience. It was too much information. I felt like I was dying, trying to study for that exam. I have a vlog about that experience where I was sleeping like two hours a night for two weeks straight, just trying to catch up on information. And I still to this day, have not caught up on all the information I need to know for that exam months later. So it's just a lot of information. So when y'all get there, just keep up. Just keep up as best as you can. Don't let it escape you. Fine. <laughs> okay, very nice, very nice. And our final question is basically, what advice do you have for someone moving to your year group? And what advice do you have for general people wanting to do medicine right now? Oh, for everybody wanting to start medicine, I think. And they haven't started as yet. I would say continue to pray about it. Make sure you feel like the career aligns with your overall purpose in life in whatever way that may mean to you. It may be different for me, it may be different for you. Like, what aspect of medicine you feel like is, you know, aligned to your purpose that God has in your life. So I would say continue to pray about it. Um, see if you like it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with going to medical school and then realizing that it might not be for you. So I I would suggest like if you have an inkling to go, go see what it's like. If you don't like it, you're free to leave. And you'll have consultants tell you that all the time. Like they tell you all the time, like we're not forcing you to be here. If you want to leave, you feel like you leave, you can leave and, and do something else. You know, it's not for everybody, which is fine. But I think if you have a desire to go into medicine, I don't think that's by mistake. So I think it's a desire that you should at least explore. So I tell everyone that wants to go into medicine, like, give it a try. See if you like it. You know, I mean, that might not always be financially the best thing to do. 
but like that's why I said pray about it. <laughs> what the Lord needs you to do, and if you trust me to it, then more than likely you're yeah, gonna be going down the right path. And just go for it, try it out, and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, as for students who are already in med or maybe going into their first year of med or something like that, um, I would say to always just do what works best for you. Um, don't look at the person next to you in class and because they're studying 12 hours a day, then you go try to mimic that. Or because they might learn better in class, you don't burn yourself out trying to be able to all the classes if you know for yourself studying at home works best for you or whatever case may be, vice versa might be the same. So like I said, I wasn't really a lecture type of girl. That worked for me, but I would never tell somebody, oh, girl, don't do the lecture. You ain't gonna learn nothing there. I would never say that. If that works for you, do that. If that does not work for you, don't waste your time with it. And that goes like across the board. Resources, different resources may work for a different person and not another person. Um, like for me, I'm, I'm a visual learner, so I know what type of information my brain processes. That's something that they taught us in high school that we had to figure out what types of learners we were. And so I think that's something important for medical students as well. You might be somebody who learns through your ears. You might be somebody who you need to touch and feel and experience something to learn it. So learning your study type or your learning type is really important, I think, and then just stick it to what works for you and not comparing yourself to anyone else. It's chill go to the hospital for a day or two, let your body catch up some, whatever the case may be, just take as many breaks as you need before your body makes you take a break or before your mind makes you take a break. And that's what happened to me. So that would always be my advice to other people to just take it piece by piece, pace yourself through the program. It's an all long program. You don't want to be going at 100 miles per hour from first year to fifth year. You're not going to make it to fifth year at that pace. So just pace it yourself, whatever pace works best for you. And yeah, just focus on your own mental health throughout the program and you'll be fine. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so that's basically all the questions we have for you today, Adam. Thank you so much for tuning Thank in with us today. And before we Thank leave you. off, we just want to play a little game of never have I ever. So if we're going to ask you some pretty easy questions, and if you have, you say, I have. If you haven't, you, you say you have not, then tell us why. A little explanation. So okay. let's start with our first question. So our first question is, never have I ever wanted to quit medical school? <laughs> I definitely have wanted to quit medical school. And like I said, Thank <laughs> you. 